Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the the next topic is angle of departure, angle of arrival. So, angle of departure, angle of arrival is also the uh, the new concepts of the root locus. So these are belongs to nothing but these are the inner concepts of the root locus only. Yes, here. What is the angle of departure and angle of arrival? So generally, generally up to now we discuss about the we discuss about the root locus concepts. In that we discussed only the real poles only. We discussed about the real poles. If the complex conjugate poles are if the complex conjugate poles are available that means the poles may be a plus jb or c plus c minus jd like that these poles are complex conjugate poles if these poles are available that time the concept of angle of departure as well as angle of arrival is uh, arrival is ent entered so here the angle of departure is calculated at complex conjugate poles. This is for the complex conjugate poles. If it consisting of the real part, imaginary part type, then these are complex conjugate poles. So the angle of departure formula is theta d equal to 180 minus 5. 180 minus 5. What is 5? 5 equal summation of poles, summation of zeros at pole at that pole at the particular pole we have a some complex conjugate pole is there here for example and we have different poles and different zeros then we will point the reference at this point what is the angle and at this point what is the angle we will discuss here then that will give the angle of departure this theta d is nothing but the angle of departure angle of departure generally departure is generally departure is available only for poles okay because poles will be because the poles will be why why departure generally poles is there zeros is there always root locus path is travel from pole to zero that means k equal 0 is nothing but the pole and k equal infinite is nothing for the nothing but the 0 so this is angle of that's why it has that departure and that's why it has the arrival so departure and arrival like this same the angle of arrival calculated at complex conjugate zeros it is only possible for complex conjugate zeros zeros means arrival look at here zero always root locus in arrival condition the root locus is arrival that's why it consisting of the angle of arrival for complex conjugate zeros it is only for complex conjugate poles and zeros so the angle of arrival equal 180 minus 5 here 5 equal summation of zeros minus summation of poles summation of zeros minus summation of poles so that's why we will get this summation of zeros means poles zeros sum of zero angles sum of zeros angles and summation of poles means sum of poles angles here also summation of poles means sum of poles angles summation of zeros means sum of zeros angles so that will difference we will get the 5 here we will get the 5 here okay so this is about the theory behind the angle of departure and angle of arrival okay next next we will discuss one problem of the root locus the problem is how to draw the root locus of g of s h of s equal to k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 this is the given 
open loop transfer function then he asked to draw the root locus so wherever we need to draw the root locus first write the given data that is open loop transfer function g of s h of s equal to k by k by s into s square plus 2s plus 2 this is the given this is the given open loop transfer function in this how many what is the how many poles we have we have diagram this is 3 multiply with s we have s cube s cube means so number of poles is 3 and number of zeros is if you observe there is no zeros zeros is 0 okay and we will find out the poles so first pole we have available poles is 3 first pole s equal to 0 and we need to find out the second remaining two poles those are s square plus 2s plus 2 is equals to 0 from this we will find so it's like a x square bx plus c by using this formula minus b plus or minus 4ac by 2 so that's why i will write minus 2 plus or minus and 4 a means here the 1 is a a means here the 1 4 a c c means 2 4 a c b square minus 4 ac sorry not direct 4 ac it is a b square minus 4 ac b square minus 2 square minus 4 a c by 2 a 2 a means 2 into 1 2 into 1 so by solving this we will get minus 2 plus r minus minus 4 by 2 so by using this we will get minus 2 plus r minus so under root j square into 4 by 2 so finally we will get minus 2 plus r minus j2 by 2 so we have the poles that is minus 1 plus r minus 1 by minus 1 plus r minus j1 are the poles so finally we will get the number of poles is 3 those are 0 one pole is minus 1 plus j1 the another pole is minus 1 minus j1 these are the three poles so so we are getting the three poles so better to draw the uh, root locus diagram so i will take a special s plane so in this s plane we have in this s plane we have real part and imaginary part in this what are the poles there first pole is equal to 0 so this is the pole s equal to 0 this is the first pole and second pole equal to minus 1 plus j1 so second pole i will take the pole is here this is so not this pole this is not a pole actually <coughs> so assume that this is the minus 1 this is the plus 1 and this is the minus 1 minus plus j1 this is minus j1 assume that this is the and assume that this is the just take it just take it this is the minus 1 so minus 1 plus j1 this combination of both so i will take those two combinations minus 1 plus j1 adding this so this is the minus j1 so this minus 1 plus j1 this is the combination we have the one pole here this is minus 1 minus j1 so i located the three poles directly three poles but we need to find out the root locus now so generally if you observe here zeros there is no zeros zeros are zero that means if this pole have zero of infinity this pole has zero of infinity this pole is zero of infinity so we have three infinity zeros 
right so first we need to find out asymptotes as well as angle of asymptotes then the centroid first we have three asymptotes we know that and angle of asymptotes so whenever angle of asymptotes angle of asymptotes so we have three required three asymptotes so generally by using that formula we will get first formula what is formula is that 2 q plus 1 by poles minus 0 into 180 we will have three asymptotes because three zeros 0 1 2 so by substituting this we will get asymptote 1 asymptote angle 1 is 60 and second angle asymptote angle 2 equal to 6 next 180 and third angle equal to third asymptote equal to 300 we have the three asymptotes but we will draw the three asymptotes but we don't know where it locates so that's why we have to find out the centroid here so next we will find out the centroid the centroid equal you know the formula of centroid sigma that is the formula is summation of real part of poles real part of poles p that means poles minus summation of real part of zeros by poles minus zeros so in this so we have look at the poles here in this poles real part is minus 1 minus 1 0 so write it here minus 1 and minus 1 and minus 1 and minus 1 and 0 by there is no real part of zeros and poles minus zeros so we will get poles minus zeros is nothing but so poles is 3 zeros is 0 so what we will get minus 2 by 3 so centroid value equal to minus 2 by 3 that means minus 0 0.66 this is the centroid so locate the centroid here locate the centroid here so that means point may point 0.5 may be there here so I will change the pen so I will change the pen here yeah so points this is the point 0.5 point 0.66 may be here so I will take this is the I will take this is the centroid point in the centroid point I already drawn I already taken the angle of 60 so 60 degrees may be 60 degrees maybe I will take this is the 60 degrees and 180 degrees maybe this side 180 degrees maybe this side and this is the 60 this is the 60 degrees angle and this is the 180 and 300 degrees maybe this side So, so I will remove this in order to avoid the confusion. So I will remove this. Yes. So we have three asymptotes. We will get the three asymptotes. And what is the location of the centroid here? Already I did it minus 0.66. Minus 0 0.6. So this is the procedure to locate the centroid as well as centroid as well as asymptotes. Okay. I hope all of, up to this, all of you understand this session. Thank you.